Hey, Black Art in America fam, this is Najee Dorsey here. Wanted to share with you uh, this upcoming Baya talk. I was invited by Diaspora Rhythms to give a talk at the Smart Museum of Art at Chicago State University. And here is the talk. Miss 
Fern. And let's think a minute about how, how do people get started for like the Miss Fern actually saw the Ebony Magazine uh, publication that came out with featured Jacob Lawrence, Roman Beard, and so many other artists. And it, it was from there, from that moment, that sparked that Pita interest in art. And from that point, she started to collect the artists around her, very similar to him, you get a familiar story, and then some of the noted artists uh, that she would come into contact with. But she passed that legacy on, she passed that influence on to a uh, major gallery who is an active collector, and that's his son. So it becomes a generational thing. You know, as, as Dr. Margaret Burroughs would say, What's your legacy? What will our legacy be? Right? Um, through the travels, come in contact with a number of artists. We all know Diamond Faith, Mike Arthur Genius. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him on several occasions. There's a number of podcasts on Black Art America right now where he talks about how his visit to the 1969 uh, Harlem on Our Mind show actually inspired him to become a photographer. So you just never know, you know, the level of impact and exposure and what's going to be that trigger that moves the needle forward for culture, you know, uh, and for individuals and, and whatnot. One of the other things that we do, again, our, our mission, our focus on has always been to try to find a happy balance, right? Some, some places you go, they focus only on the contemporary. Some places you go, they only focus on, on, only on the legacy artists. We try to get balance and show the, the spectrum, you know, because we got how many artists in? Raise your hand, there's so many artists in here. Everybody raise their hand if they're an artist, <laughs> right? So many artists in here. Please get to know the artists in your community. But it's important that we tell our story that we document our journey, not only for the artist, the collector, the institution. Um, it's a record of who, you know, who we are and what we're doing during this time. And so there's a great podcast on there. And this is only one example of one of the podcasts that we got with the leader, Martin. And we're doing some really dynamic things now. Let me share this with you. This is a new format that we're using to uh, engage more people with learning about some of the artists that's in, in, their, uh, in their communities and around the country. How can we do more dynamic for people when they see it on social media to be engaged and interested? I know, y'all like a little bit of So, uh, this is a recent talk. Please visit the site and check the conversation I had with Charmaine Minifield out. Now, you know, grateful, just had the two magnificent portraits unveiled, many different opinions, you know. A lot of people saw it a lot of different ways, but at the end of the day, I think most of us are happy that we've got two artists of color creating these works uh, of our former president and first lady. But I wanted to kind of dive into the conversation with a lot of arts professionals around the country. And, and hear their thoughts about, you know, their perspective. Because, you know, it's not always sugary, it's not always flowery. You know, we, we do have opposing views at times. So this is a great conversation that we had on Bayer. You can check that out. There's several arts professionals from around the country. Uh, noted interviews with Dr. Talim Taha. You know, to the bottom left right here, we got the fantasy culture of the Baltimore, Baltimore a rappers. And so art documenting our culture, we sharing those visual stories with with a global audience. Take a second to talk about the reach, right? When Biden first started, there was, there was really not a place where the artists and the collectors could really gather, so we grew quickly. And within the first year, we were up to, you know, three or 4,000 uh, members. Over the course of eight years, we got over 30,000 plus subscribers. We, we just eclipsed 100,000 followers on the Black Art and Heritage Fair page on Facebook alone. But we got multiple properties where we run content on black culture. It's all about, you know, we got beauty bonds over everything black, art and art soul, some other things I get into later. Uh, but all together on Facebook alone, our reach is over 170,000 followers. At our peak, um, you know, this whole thing with barbecue bacon that's going on right now, I'm sure y'all have seen that. You know, we, we shared a piece on uh, a meme with that. And it's just crazy how things explode, right? Over 5,000 shares in three days. 5,000 shares with a reach of like 400,000 people 
So, you know, at some point we figure out how we kind of engage this audience, you know, bring them over to the art side, but it's a constant growth, you know, constantly growing. And so these are just some of the conversations that we've been a part of around the country. When some of our know, know the artists, I mean, we celebrate their lives, but also at times we've been some among the first to kind of get the word out when, when we lose one. You know, and so when uh, Barbara uh, Jones, who passed, we ran a story. But one of the other things that we do, and we don't shy away from, is the responsibility that we have to provide a platform to get, a, you know, important messages out. Like John Guest, the director of the Houston uh, Museum of African American Culture, in his, in his uh, uh, essay that he wrote, A Call for Equity in uh, his, Houston's uh, Cultural Funding, that you realize <coughs> of, of, philanthropy, of, of national philanthropy organizations, less than 2% go to minority organizations. And so we got to spread the word, figure out how to build some bridges, figure out you know, if there's a way that we can uh, raise a level of consciousness or, or build a bridge or you know, get some people on that, so, so some things that we can work on. But we got to be able to let the community know. You know what's going on, and that's one of the things that we do. Uh, as this plays, this also goes into some of the documentation that we do with a number of, uh, you know, number of artists and these dynamic ways of presenting. This is a piece on Reginald Gammon, uh, who was one of the founding members of Spiral. Uh, that's actually his iconic image that was used for the the, the Hall of My Mind piece. But again, we got some of our more noted artists, our legacy artists, Richard Mink, and Elizabeth Cabot, and. Uh, that's are still living, but this is just some of the, just a, some of the material that we push out uh, through our platform. Y'all good out there? Yeah. Y'all need to stretch? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. You need to reach out and touch and collect. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Again, what will our legacy be? Be um, I think, I think, I think. I feel as though I, I fall within a certain tradition. You know, and not, not everybody falls within this tradition, you know? I mean, you could be an artist of color, you could be a black artist, but you may not necessarily have a, sense, a sensibility toward the culture. You may not necessarily feel a, a need for there to be some level of social responsibility or nation building. And I think that while I didn't have a relationship with Dr. Mary Burroughs and we celebrated her success when she was living on Black Art in America, you know, that type of thing of building institutions and providing space and being a scholar and, and, and being all in on black culture is, 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 the, is the legacy that I look to follow in. The same thing with Dr. Samella Lewis, you know, so we can just, you know, remember the ones who have, who have, who have blazed the trail for us to do what we do and know that, you know, we're just one, one, little, one little cog in the wheel as we, you know, move culture forward and engage people and celebrate our lives and, and, and who we are and what we do. Um, just a few talk, you know, stories untold or stories forgotten. And, we, and it's important for us to play a, a, a position in the, in the narrative of our culture, you know, because if we don't, someone else is going to tell that story. And oftentimes, you know, other people don't necessarily see us like we see ourselves. You know what I mean? And so it's important. Um, those type of things are important. Nothing better than social media right now. There's no way that you can build, no easy way to build a platform and audience and engage people and get the word out around the world in a nanosecond, right? Uh, every now and then we got a quick fight. So this is just some of my work right here uh, from my resistance series. Uh, the piece in the middle is a piece I did right after Mike Brown was, was, was murdered. Um, I'll play this little piece right here. This was a, this a little a promo that we ran for the resistance show in. So it's, it's you know, the, the, this level of consciousness I think is important, you know, for, for, for us as media. 
you know, it shows up in the work. It shows up in, in the advocacy that we do for the culture, you know. Um, and it's the little things, and it's important that, you know, I mean, it's really interesting to see how people, you know, on social media, like oftentimes, we'll share something that's not necessarily so art related, and people will be like, well, what does it have to do with art? Well, you know, it's had to do with life. Hey, Black Art in America family, this is Najee Dorsey. Thank you again for listening to another installment of Buy Your Talk. We're going to take a minute to bring you up to speed on some of the things that we've got going. If you uh, enjoy this particular program or the other programs here on Black Art in America and would like to be a patron supporter, we now have that capability. So visit the Patronage uh, link. You can find it in the Educational Resources tab in the navigation bar. I also want to make you aware of we're introducing buyblackart.com will be a fine art listing place for artists and collectors to list works at no commissions. That's right, no commissions. So be sure to stay tuned for that. That's launching June 1st. The other thing is that if you've always wanted to start a business or you've given thought to starting a business, we now have Garden Art for the Soul. So look for the Garden Art Biz link in the nav bar. And once again, thank you for listening to this message of some of the new and exciting things happening with Black Art in America. And we're going back to the program. You know, you know, in terms of the struggle that, that's happening right now and it has continued to happen, you know, since we've been here. And, you know, I don't know, for me it's important. And I think when you see the, the work that we do at Baya, it's reflected in um, uh, the same type of advocacy that comes from the top. Here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a prime example. Um, one of the art critics was criticizing the work of, of Alma Thomas that made the show a few years ago. We put, we put, a, we put a staff right on that. You know, the, and, and he was so full with the, with the backlash that he, he quickly recanted. You know, and so having access to, to, to scholars and art educators and people to know about the field to actually write and contribute stories that are, you know, we think that are more balanced and, and, and uh, is important. This is one example, and I'm, I'm gonna try to pick it up a little bit because I got a lot of things to share. One, one um, Satir and I were in Kansas City. We see this young, young brother who's about 10 years old walking in the museum. We engage him, get to talking to him. And he's got these little bouncy balls. I said, you know, what are you doing with these bouncy balls? And you can find this article on, on Black Art America. He said, well, my mom, he said, I sell them to, to, to help raise, make some, you know, take some money to help my mom out, you know, you know be struggling. <coughs> and I said, and I, he, but he had mentioned he was an artist. I said, well, you're an artist, right? I said, yeah. I said, well, you know, you should sell your art, right? And I said, well, said, go get some art and let me see what you're working with. So he comes back with this little sculpture piece. And I was a little skeptical whether he did it or not, but it wasn't important, right? It really didn't matter. So we, we, we said, okay, well, I'll buy it, but you got to sign it. So we go into the gift shop. The guy in the gift shop is like, what are you doing in here? You know you're not supposed to be here without an adult. And I'm like, what the hell? You know? And so he says, and so Darius leaves, and he looks at me and says, well, uh, that guy's destined for trouble. And I'm like, how in the hell is he destined for trouble? He's in a museum. I mean, what better place, you know, what better, what, what, what better place do we have him? And so I wrote a letter. I was, I was, I mean, I was steaming. I wrote a letter, and this thing made it all the way up to the board of trustees. It was all on the media in Kansas City. Uh, people were outraged, calling from around the country. The dude got reassigned. They reached out to Darius and gave him a, a summer internship uh, free of charge. And, and, you know, so I continued to follow him like a year or so later. But that's the power of media. We start to look at, you know, art, art and influence. These are the important stories. We speak for Darius. You know what I mean? And, and uh, but real quick, small town guy. Uh, my first job at 12 years old was actually working at that Greyhound bus station. My, 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 my grandparents, the picture on the right is when I went to Napoleonville, Louisiana. My grandparents left Napoleonville, a uh, sugar cane plantation, and moved my father to New Orleans. So, you know, like, all, like many of us, we come from, you know, humble beginnings. That's my mom to the right, my first patron. Right? Yeah. That's uh, 24 years in. <laughs> right? 24 years. I couldn't do what I do without my wife. Right? She makes it, she, I mean, she, she's a superwoman. I mean, really, put up with me and everything that she do? Lord. Um, when I met the job, Man, I remember him telling me these stories about, you know, man, years when I was doing this, that, and third, we, 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 and one, and out the, out the other. I was just kind of in the moment, you know. One 
the first trips he, 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 uh, he took me was actually to Chicago. He came, he brought me to Nami Gallery and right next door to Nicole Gallery. The first time I met Nicole was like in 92, 93. And that woman, right? Yeah, I'll get into that a little bit later. But one of the things that Najar always said was, you know, teach, therefore they understand the message better than you. Therefore they become the teacher and you the student. So we're constantly building and reaching back and going. You know, one of, one of the books I, that, one of the excerpts from a book that I read on Titan on stewardship, this was my favorite quote. I believe that the universe is designed in such a manner that if you put forth the effort, it must yield to you. You know, embrace that. You want, you want to follow your dreams and your passion and, 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 and see a better world? The universe is designed in such a manner that if you put forth the effort, it must yield to you. In 2005, we moved to Atlanta. Okay, you know, I just had to throw this in, you know, my big break, you know, they did good time. So, spent five years running, doing shows, blah, 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 this and that. And 2011, I was approached to do a show at the Columbus Museum. And, and the show took place in 20, 2014. It was my first solo show uh, at a museum. Happens to be a majority museum, second largest museum in the state. Uh, th these are images from that show. What happens, what happens when institutions support living artists, right? Check this out. The average opening for a show was 100 to 150 people. We had 500 people at that opening, right? People were ready. You know, they want to see something new, see something fresh, see some, some things that they hadn't seen before, right? 500 people. The, the couple to the, to the left of me, uh, or to my right brother, right here, Dan and Kathleen Amos, the owners of Aflac. They were so impressed and, 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 and moved with the open and reception and the community engagement, they donated $100,000 to fund an African American art fund, okay? From that fund, they started using them. Quite a piece by Amy Sherrill, a couple other examples of works on the right-hand side. But that's great, you know? The museum shows, but a, 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 being a contemporary artist, I, was, I moved to the community, got engaged, started to work with the Liberty Theater, started to do projects. This was our art jam. These are some of the people that participated. We opened up a gallery and played Bailey, uh, uh, Bailey who's no longer with us, uh, unfortunately, but she was our artist in residence, you know? So it's like, where do we put, where do we, where do we put our power, you know? And, and, and these are just some of the things that we do with the empowerment that you've given to me, given to, given to my family and the things that we do. These are just, this is some of the give back. There's more. Teach, therefore, they understand the message better than you. Therefore, they become the teacher and you the student. What happens when a group of people reject how they're defined by media? We create our own. Black art in America. Muhammad Ali's famous quote, me, we. Right? Y'all following us online? Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Yeah. You need to stretch or something like that? <laughs> you can reach out and touch an artist? OK. All right. Before social media and after after media, Love this African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go what? There we go. Be seen, be heard, be validated. We can do that with our own. We can't control what somebody else is doing. It's one of my pieces right here, which is what democracy looks like. We launched in 2010 at the Southwest Black Fine Art Show in Dallas. This was the original cover on the right hand side. Uh, that we had. Just a few of our statistics. And these are these are actually dated. We actually recommended what, what many people don't know. This visions project. We were we were on the ground floor. We actually recommended a number of artists for this project. Here are a few: Dial, Joyce, uh, Najar. There were others. You know. <coughs> Relates building relationships that continue to move the needle for further. The curator of my show at the Columbus Museum is a Christian, was Christian Milton on the far right hand side. She took another position at Lowell. She asked me about introducing her to some artists. I took her to the studio at Kevin Cole, Charlie and Charlie Palmer. Uh, on this day, they ended up giving Kevin a, a, a show uh, and later picked up a major piece. And I also introduced him to uh, the work of Carl Joe Williams, which is the most multimedia piece uh, to the right of the text there. Uh, he was part of this, the show as well. The impact, right? Why is it important for us to have our media? Why is it important for us to share our stories? 
when you, this is one of my favorite quote, one of my favorite comments on Black Art in America. We posted this piece right here and this sister said, this is why I follow this page along with Essence and Ebony and all the other black media because I've always struggled with seeing myself as beautiful. But when I come here, you know, yeah, I got the visual represent representation that helps build esteem for myself and let me know that I'm wonderful, that I matter, that I'm beautiful. That's the power of black media. Some of the key difference makers in my life on this art journey, Frank Frazier, Miss Nicole, Najar, and some nut that's in the middle of the road, <laughs> right back there. My man, Eugene, right? Some of the impact that we've had, Jamal Barber is a successful artist art right now in, in Atlanta, but took him on early, bought his first portfolio when he decided to do silk screens. Hooked them up with Curly Houghton to do an internship at EBI. Next thing you know, he's doing printmaking. Now he's doing major shows, and he did a big piece with the with the uh, with the National uh, National Black Art Festival in Atlanta. So it's always a matter of you know, reach, grab. What's so? One of the things that we do is two years into Black Art in America, we had to figure out how do we sustain this thing, right? and we started to produce our own shows and experiences around the country. The Black Art in America model, model for exhibition, I mean for, for, for uh, our events is exhibition programming and performance. We couple legacy artists and pair it with contemporary artists and we won't be selling no boots, it's all a curated space. It's about giving the right type of presentation and so th this, this is uh, what we do. Our first show was at the Audubon Ballroom, historic grounds right there with brothers uh, Malcolm was assassinated, right? You want to talk about a powerful show? That show was bad. We've had our challenges. We made our way through them. First big art campaign, 2012. How many people know about Art Basel, right? A number of years ago, not so many of us did. Largest art fair that takes place in the Americas. Half a billion dollars of art being sold, international art fair. More private jets flying for this than flying for the Super Bowl. We wanted to figure out how can we get our artists in our community to be more aware of our Basel, so we started this campaign, Do You Basel? Let's go down there and see what's popping. Let's see if we get in where we fit in, right? And ever since that campaign in 2012, there's been way more artists and, color, artists and collectors and people in the field that's attended than ever before. Our first event, look over there to your top right. Who do we have in the house? You know? But see, uh, it's, who, you, it's important who you get a mic to, right? If you get a mic to, 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 to someone over here, they may say only, you know, only these artists. Only, oh, this is the only way to do it, right? But you get a mic to Patrick. You get a mic to Dan, to Joan, to Dias Willem. They're talking about finding art around you, something to fall in love with. And if you want the other works, that's fine. But these, these are no less important to me in my life than these other pieces. And that was purposeful to have, 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 uh, Dan, I mean, have uh, Patrick come down and be a part of that first, camp, that first campaign. Also, we got uh, uh, Diane, Diane there as well was a part of it as well. So there's some images. That's the talk we had. Always working. Our first big show in New York was at the Faison Firehouse Theater. Since did a few more. Okay. Um, entrepreneurs recognize opportunity. We got this audience. We're media. How do we create? We, we're doing these shows. We create a space and a platform for curated works where we sell originals and limited editions by some of the artists of note, as well as some of the contemporaries. Shop by online. Please visit that site as well. Here's a front page. What it looks like. We've done uh, work with a number of artists, work with a few estates. Uh, this is our last show that we did in Houston right here on the right-hand side this past October. Phenomenal. If you look at the bottom right-hand side, who did we bring in from Chicago? Candace. My good sister, Candace. And she did a beautiful installation of works. And uh, we, we really enjoyed having it. We really added. We took it over the top, no doubt. Some of, the people, some of the people that have supported some of the things that we do. We've got a big show coming up in Philly, September 14th through the 16th. Mark your calendars. We want you in the house. We want you there. And we're going to provide a platform for Dias and Rhythms to talk about what you're doing here if you come. All right? 
Satiri and I, we bought, we had been living in lofts and, 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 and uh, you know, leasing for X number of years while we was in Georgia. We finally bought a house. We wanted to take our love of collecting, you know, that's inside, outside. We came up with this product called Garden Art for the Soul. Taking some of my early works, actually the early works that Miss Nicole loved, isolating the figure and, 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 and re repurposing them and generating them on these aluminum sculptures. Shared that there was a video that we shared within three days because people hadn't seen it. it went viral. We had over 500,000 views in three days. Started to get orders from around the country. And the rest is, uh, as they say, our story is a success story, right? You know, later for that, you know, starving artists, this and that, this and that. You know, our story is a success story, you know? Just want to just wanna share some of the things that we've done. One of the things I thought was really funny is I was doing this photo shoot with, 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 my, with, my, with my blues guy at this building, and they had these, had these rappers that wanted to use my band as a prop in their video, right? <laughs> I'm like, hey, the irony. Where do we go from here? Let's see, I got some notes or something. Hmm. What's the gave it up? Okay. All right, so more dynamic production, optimized value content. We are, we are launching some new things. We got, um, we are, we're launching a platform called uh, Buy Black Art. A lot of collectors, they need an outlet to sell works. They collect them for years. What's going to happen with that work? And while we've got Shop Buyer as more of a curated space, this other space is being designed specifically tailored for collecting. No commission fees. You know, small listing fee. You sell it, it's yours. You know, we're sharing it on Black Art in America, uh, using our reach and to, to amplify what's available. That's going to launch the first of the month. Uh, if you like what we do, we got a uh, Patreon. You know, if you've heard of the GoFundMe, we've never launched a GoFundMe campaign, uh, but because what we want to do, we brought on new staff, and had to give a shout out, Diamond, Raven, raise your hand. Yep, that's the Black Art America team back there in the corner, right? And so, one of the things that we want to do is create more content, get more of these stories out, uh, provide educational resources to schools. We got a lot of high schools, universities uh, that utilize Black Art America as a resource. Uh, we could, uh, if you want to learn more about our patronage account, small monthly con contribution goes to fund bringing on new staff to create more content so we can share about our stories. Uh, get levels from $3, 10 25 50 and on, and they all come with benefits. Um, and so we can definitely share, you, share more information on that. You know, uh, Life's a Journey is the title of one of my famous, one of, one of my pieces that I love so much. This has been our journey, all right? And again, this journey happens because of the support that we've gotten from the collectives, the support we've gotten from our fellow artists. Um, this community that we have is a special community, both in Chicago and around the country. We need each other. And, you know, this, any investment that you've made in, in me, Black Heart in America, is the direct result of that investment. So, you know, you guys are stakeholders, you know? You guys are stakeholders. Anybody that's bought a piece, those rep, you know, that's that's how that happens. Uh, we got an art show in reception, y'all. <laughs> Cornell Village. Right after this. I'm open to feel any questions. I hope I didn't then 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 bore y'all. Uh, but thank you for your time and attention. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to start out and, and just kind of clarify some comments that you made earlier. You talked about the power of art, uh, particularly the, around the experience you had with Harriet. Okay. Mm -hmm. You talked about all the good things that happened uh, kind of after your engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said that's the power of art. Uh, I think that could be corrected slightly okay. to say that's the power of engagement and involvement. Because that would not have happened but for you following up behind that experience with the gift store owner. That story is great for all the reasons that you you, you expressed, mm -hmm. but I think in all your humbleness, you should be applauded for 
taking the initiative to step forward and address a situation that was a wrong and oftentimes goes unaddressed. That is important. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I've got several questions. But the first one, I wanted to know, uh, what has been sort of the pushback or the criticism of the concept of a uh, social media platform for visual arts? You know, we laud it, we think it's great, but yeah. I'm sure there's somebody or some people that have said, you know, that's not a good thing. Well, I, I think I think the criticism, any criticism, the criticisms that we got, the most would be, uh, we still have a lot of issues with identity. You know, some people see themselves as, as uh, well, I don't want to be boxed into being a black artist. Um, and but we, you know, we built a monument to the sky to it. You know, we ran to it. We figured it'd be an easy way for people to find us, find the artists, find the community. Uh, the I don't really. Some people don't want to spend the time in terms of the investment that it takes to really take advantage of social media. And um, but it's 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 here to stay, you know. That's how that's how people people it's changing the landscape of how people uh, find artists, acquire art, get information. I mean, people are curating their own, uh, you know, curating their own uh, space and time of the things, their own level of interest in things, you know. Whether it's a YouTube video or whether it's following particular pages or whatever the case may be. I mean, the networks are, are definitely struggling, and, and television is. It's running scared, and so you know times are changing. I mean, you think about it. I mean, th I mean, think about this. You know, ten years ago, you know, you couldn't. What would it take to run a media company to do to have the impact that we had? Money. You know, Black Art America started with an interest, and one of these bad boys right here, a telephone, documenting, telling the story, putting, the, put, you know, putting the platform together, and so that's the power that we have right now. And uh, it's how we can, you know, how we need to utilize it and take advantage of it, is what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you met him. Oh, my name is Curtis, Curtis Coco Mother, and I do a lot of blogging. In fact, I think I was one of your first members. Okay. And uh, the question I have is probably two. What do you think? You might have covered this already, but that's a good thing. Online marketing, online galleries. Uh, I think at one time you were also selling marketing artists. Uh, did you cover that one? Well, I mean, the thing about it, I mean, Black Art in America, I mean, if you go to our Facebook page, you know, several times a day, three, you know, seven days a week, 365, I mean, we're sharing the work of so many artists. We've shared thousands of images, all that's free marketing. They don't pay for that. Um, and the stories that we're telling, the artists, the, the, all the podcasts, the interviews, the videos, and everything, that nobody's paying for that. You know, we pay for that. You know, we pay because it's important. We, we you know, our story is important. We love it. Uh, this is a road that we've chosen. You know, in spite of, you know, we do what we do in spite of no corporate support or funding. You know, I, would, I actually think some of the stances that we've taken is probably part of the reason why we don't. Because you think, of, take a look at the audience and the numbers that we got. You know, I mean, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? But when you get to be too vocal on certain things and don't necessarily, you know, go down the straight and narrow that, 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 that they want to see you go down, there's some consequences that come with that, you know? But that's okay, you know? That's okay. We keep pushing, you know, and doing what we do. We do what we do because we love it and it's needed uh, and we think it's important, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, about 30 years ago, I did a non-scientific survey mm -hmm. of 20 black curators white curators asking them who they thought was the most significant historical African American artist. Most of the black curators said Henry Oscar Tapp. All of the white curators said Horace Pippin, mm -hmm. even though their sense of Pippin was based on a misinterpretation of him, seeing his artwork as more like Grandma Moses' quaint rather than what it was really like, which was Malcolm X. Fast forward to the present. Okay. The Montclair Art Museum recently $500,000 for the work of Carl Walker, arguably the most widely exhibited African American artist today in museums, male or female, that ever did. Even though many African Americans uh, are find the work disturbing sure. and feel that it's derogatory mm -hmm. towards African Americans. So, my first question is about the privilege, I mean, the popularity of Carl Walker. The next issue. In 1971, Whitney Museum curator Robert Doby said that abstraction 
represented a higher state of intellectual achievement on the part of African American artists. And recently, as more museums have started to get African American art in this collection, I see a kind of privileging of abstraction, a focus of wanting, of preferring to get abstraction. And we see this in exhibits like Soul of the Nation, where in terms of scale, abstraction is privileged. So uh, uh, that's an issue that I want you to get your response on. And finally, uh, one New York City art dealer who's not black, uh, purportedly often says that he knows more about, about black art than any black art curator out there. Mm. And this attitude has tended to be believed by some museum curators who tend to give him more influence, I think, than is deserved uh, in terms of what they show. So it's this idea of art gallery dealers focusing on what they can make money off of what they have as opposed to what African-American artists are really accomplishing. Mm -hmm. So those three issues I would like to respond to. Popularity of Carl Walker, the privileging of abstraction by museums, and the hidden agendas of our dealers. Well, you just nailed it right there. You know, it's, it's one we got to understand is a business, you know. Um, as it relates to Carol Walker, I mean, she's shown, we all have our different opinions. Um, you know, it's really, it, I don't, I don't even know if that's important for the majority of us, you know, because I don't know if we necessarily come to art like that. You know, what, what these institutions are doing uh, with the showing the work, we can't, we can't really control that. You know, we're not on the boards. You know, you got an agenda and a system that's pushing that work, that's pushing that material, and many of us don't necessarily agree with it. I know, you know, I'm not the biggest fan. Um, but I think if you're looking to gauge popularity, I mean, you're talking about one market, you know, and there are multiple markets, and you know, that's the one that we pay attention to the most because that's where the high, dollar, high dollars are at. But, you know, I think if you look at the numbers, if you share, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use a pool of social media and, and engagement and how people see things, you know, it would never, you know, it appealed in comparison to, you know, a number of contemporary artists that are more, com some people say more commercial. That's going to take us down a rabbit hole, really getting into a lot of that conversation right there. Uh, even even the former abstract. I went to the Solar Nation show. I was there for the opening. They had more than just abstraction there. Museums are collecting a lot of different material from a lot of different uh, a lot of different genres. You know, more than more than just abstraction. Right now, there's 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 never been a singular focus on African American material like it is right now. You know, with the acquisitions, with the shows, we're packing the house. Um, and that's where the energy is. As it relates to, what was the, what was the last question that you asked? On the hidden agendas of our dealers. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's Mr. Charlie's Isis Colder concept. You know, art is a product. You know, or, or art is art, people make it a product. You know, it becomes their widget and, and you know, people are assessing value to it. Um, and that's all it is, it's just a marketplace. You know, but that's not, that's really not why I'm here. Right, you know, this evening, you know, we can have a, another conversation, uh, another time about my philosophy on the market. I know when I talk with collectors, you know, most of the collectors that I work with are not necessarily chasing these, um, you know, chasing artists like that. You know, that's 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 you know, that's not even their interest. I mean, everybody want to hit a home run when they can, but the, you know, the market valuation has already been pushed there, um, and so anyway. Any other questions? I mean, not you know, I mean, it's just not. That's not something that I can really add a whole lot of value to it right now, um, to the question. But please, either one. No, sorry. Yeah. The, uh, the recent sale of Kerry James Marshall's work. Yes, sir. Is that going to? You may have already addressed that. Mm -hmm. Is that going to change the feel for for black art, or is it just an anomaly? And especially given the fact that uh, was it P Diddy bought it. I mean, it's going, to, it's going to have some influence. It's going, to have, it's going to have a certain level of effect. I think it's going to be a certain level of trickle down. You know, people, the majority of people are influenced, but now I don't think the seasoned collectors are necessarily influenced by what P. Diddy do. You know, I don't know if uh, most collectors are going to, you know, go out and spend a heck of a lot more money outside of their budget or their level of interest right now, but there's more, there's more people collecting African-American material than ever before. You've got more art that's ever been produced than ever. Than, than ever. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Are you going to have a discussion about that on your platform? Uh, perhaps. 
you know, it's so recent, it happened when, when we were basically in travel coming here. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll see. Just, you know, follow the pages of Biden. But I think, that, I mean, that's definitely an impact. That's an impact when the Obamas bought the work uh, that they had in the White House. When you take a look at the Alma Thomas and, you know, because when that work initially went in, Alma uh, Thomas prices were probably about 200000 or something, somewhere in that range. And it's, it's, it's substantially more than that now. The impact that Amy Sherrill's work. I tell you this, when um, I want to say I had my show in 2014 at the museum, at the Columbus Museum. They had hired a new director like within six months. A few months after that, I had actually sent an email to, to the director saying that you should, you know, because Amy's from Columbus, you should really give a consideration to giving her a show. Didn't pay any attention. I reached out to Amy, because I was actually trying to figure out could we work with her to sell some of her work. At that time, her prices were like six to 9,000 for her more substantial pieces, her, ma her major works at that time. Fast forward eight months, six months, eight months, somewhere in that range, she wins that national portrait thing. Get pick, you know, picked up by Major Gallery, her work's going from 15 to 30. Fast forward another year, uh, she gets the Obama Commission. There's a waiting list right now, about three years, her price is 155. So, you know, it's, it's happening. Uh, people are buying, people are becoming more interested. I think it's great that P. Diddy bought the piece. I actually, I actually thought he was full of crap because I saw him in Miami doing our Basel for like three years and he would always come in at the same time, like during the media time, right before it was open to the general public. And I tried to get an interview, he wouldn't even stop. And so after about three years of seeing him come in at this particular time, and, and then I, I follow him around a little bit and see him looking around and stuff, but he wasn't really, he didn't have that look like many of us have when we, you know, really engaged in trying to buy a piece. You know, I thought, I thought it was just for show, you know, but hey, kudos. You know, congratulations. You know, he stepped up to the plate in a major way. 21 mil? Psh, you know what I'm saying? So I was wrong. Excuse me, Pete did it. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, from past and rhythm's perspective, right. do you have any suggestions or ideas where we can have a stronger media presence? Yeah, like Art in America. <laughs> Yeah, real simple. I mean, Pat, Patrick tell you from the beginning. I've been saying the same. I've been saying the same thing from the beginning. We got to get more of a collaboration. You, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to put the. You don't have to put that level of interest and investment in it. We've already done it. We've got an audience, and you got and you and you've got the support. I, I mean, I, I believe in diaspora rhythms. That's, that's these my people. You know what I'm saying? I believe in the philosophy of diaspora rhythms. You know what I mean? And so, you know, leverage leverage that. That's, that's, that's your vehicle right there. You don't have to do the work, you know? So that's what I would say. And get younger, which is always a challenge. Yes. I didn't hear that. Get younger. Right. Get younger. Get younger. Get younger. Right. I think it was, was that a, was that a, I can Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, tell you something. When when so when the job when the job the job has always been courting Nomi Gallery, right? So we were, he was courting Nomi, we went next door to go see Nicole. And when when he was talking with Nicole, you know, he was doing what he should have done, talk about his work, this and that. I'm a, I'm a short at this point. I'm 20, 21 years old. I'm laying in the cut. And eventually Miss Nicole, she looks over and she said, she said, are you an artist? You know that voice, right? Are you an artist? I said, yeah, yes ma'am. She said, oh, I'd love to see some of your work. Now this is 1992, 1993, right? Fast forward 12 years, I'm in, I moved, we moved to Atlanta. They had just had the first Embrace show, a spinoff of the National Black Fine Arts Show. I go in there, I run across, I run into Jemani. We chit chat, and I say, well, what happened to the gallery across? He said, oh, Miss Nicole, she's right around the corner. I go and, and go in, um, and, and as soon as I walk in, she said, I remember you. She said, you're an artist. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, you know, what are you doing? I said, just moved to Atlanta, showed her the, the work that I was doing. She fell in love with the work, and she's like, I want to work with you. You're doing beautiful work, you know? And she would always talk about how we needed beauty in our life, you know? You know, we needed, you know, humanity and beauty and grace and, 
I mean, she was just gracious, man. She gave me, she was my first major gallery. You know, she gave me a show, you know? And you gonna have me choking up up here. You know, I mean, man. I can't. What made you come away from that conversation at the Scott's house and decide to do the social media? Thank you, Tanner. It's okay. It's okay. You lost a lot. It's these moments that are so precious to us when we know that we are family. Najee is a very, very important person to me. Uh, and for a long time, I thought he didn't think I really liked and appreciated what he was doing. Uh, but I have from the very beginning, because I had heard from people like uh, uh, Carol and from uh, uh, seeing him at the Dixon School and at uh, Cynthia Bowman's house and so forth. I knew people were really engaged with this man and that he was really very powerful. Also, seeing it at the, I, that's why I asked you the question about that, that conversation. The conversation was normal. We were just talking what we normally talk about. How artists not being appreciated, collectors uh, not wanting to accept the term of being collectors, uh, and that we were just sort of in a, in a sort of uh, a miasma, uh, that where the artistic uh, flow of the power of this, of this culture was just not being really channeled. I walked away, because it's kind of a conversation that we've, as in Diaspora, we've had it all the time. He goes away and comes up with a phenomenal device to push this whole culture forward. He invites me to come down to Art Basel. And I said, oh, OK. I, I had kind of, was kind of like with him. I just partially understood it. But he gave me the platform to speak to an audience that came from all over the country. And in fact, there were some pretty important people in that audience. I didn't know that. And, and we were t just basically just giving the, the Diaspora Rhythms pitch about how we need to invest in our culture, not the invest in the money. We've then, since that time, have had a continuous relationship. He's invited me down to Columbus, and that's when I got the real surprise, a treat for all the people in diaspora rhythms. He and Soteria are major art collectors. They have serious work up in there. And he was kind of hesitant. I think you were at the beginning. I said, man, you're an art collector. He says, ah, we got to things. You know? <laughs> but he is an amazing art collector. And so I look at Mr. Najee Darcy as one, he's an artist, phenomenal artist. I have some of his work. And I see now that he's a major art collector. So therefore, he understands what, how we view this whole activity in this world. And we see he is clearly an art activist. He is not going to stop and not push, push the issues forward that are important to our culture. And then the last, he's truly an entrepreneur. Because I, I recognize that was the difference. I'm not necessarily an entrepreneur. The difference is that I walked away from that conversation at the Scott's house. I want to continue to talk about it. Here's somebody who says, I'm going to walk away from that conversation and I'm going to do something about it, and I'm going to make some money at the same time, and, and, and provide opportunities for everyone. Okay. 
It's, it's, it's our moment to embrace the art, embrace each other. You know, we can uplift culture through our decisions to support the artists and support the institutions that we believe in. And, um, you know, it's a celebratory time. I hope you can make it over to, to the reception uh, at Cornell Village. This is Najee Dorsey. You listen to another installment of Bio Talks. Be sure to follow Black Art in America at blackartinamerica.com and look for us on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And remember, you can always shop for art online at www.buyblackart.com. <laughs>